Cat Weld Consulting community, we're going to be making popovers today. Popovers are basically Yorkshire puddings. They're the same ingredients that you use for Yorkshire pudding. The only difference is when you're making a popover for breakfast, you're probably going to use Pam in your cup or in your muffin tin. Um, if you're making Yorkshire pudding, you're going to want to use beef fat from the drippings of the beef that you're cooking because that's what it goes with. Um, and it does give it a different flavor, a distinctly different flavor. Beef fat is about the only thing <laughs> that is um, going to be slick enough for, other than Pam, for a Yorkshire pudding to pop. And depending on the cup you use, whether you're using a big wide cup like this one, or a muffin tin, which is narrower, um, your popover is gonna pop more out of a narrower pan. That's why if you go to some fancy schmancy store and they have a popover pan, you're gonna notice that the cups of the popover pan are very narrow. And that's because the popover basically is gonna pop out of that pan and they want it to be really, really high. So if you ha use something a little wider like this, it's going to spread a little bit more. And if you've ever gone to England and you've had Yorkshire pudding, they very often serve it in a casserole dish and it's spread all over the casserole dish. But that's part of the serving as well. Uh, when we make popovers, the thing to remember is that um, it is really only about three ingredients with a pinch of salt but there's a knack to how you make them. And if we mix them too much, they're gonna go flat. So let's talk a little bit about our tools. Uh, you can make popovers in an, a regular old muffin tin. You can make popovers in a custard cup. Um, if you're gonna bake a popover in a custard cup, you're gonna have more material in this custard cup than you are in this little muffin tin. So this one will bake at 20 minutes at 450 degrees, and then you lower the temperature to 350. Now, here's the thing about popovers. They fool you. You think that they're done after 20 minutes because they're all popped. And you think, oh my goodness, I'm gonna have them right now. But if you don't keep them in the oven for another 20 minutes, if it's this, uh, at 350, they're not going to be done on the inside. So you're going to take them out and they're going to be all puffy, but they're going to be all like not done on the inside. And so that's not going to be very good because they're soggy and they just collapse. So patience, that's what you have to remember with popovers. 20 minutes at 450, 20 minutes at 350, or 15 minutes because you're making four with the same material, okay? So it's 15 minutes at 450 and 15 minutes at 350, and then these will be done. Now, we can also make, if we're making like a double batch, I'm gonna give you the simplest recipe. It is one egg, beaten, and a half cup of flour, and a quarter, teaspoon of salt, that would be salt, and then you are going to pour in a half cup of milk. You have to do it in this order because if you try to mix it too much, it's not going to be lumpy and it's not going to pop. Um, so let's put together that recipe. Start with our egg. Now, I am making it in a Pyrex cup. If you're making a double batch of these, if you're like making these for a whole bunch of people, you're going to want to use some big thing and you're going to want to double or triple the recipe. But for our purposes, let's just keep it simple. One egg. So we take this egg and we're going to really give it a good whipping. You can use a whisk of any kind, but we want to get this really thoroughly whipped, nice and frothy. Okay. 
Now, the half cup of flour. As you can see, I'm very scientific about my flour. Um, just throw that in there. And then the quarter teaspoon of salt. Okay, that had a piece of, that had a piece of salt that was, we want it, the salt to be smooth because we don't want to see people to um, bite into a great big chunk of salt. Okay, and now the milk. And this is a half cup of milk. Now, you can measure the half cup of milk in, a, in this same cup, or you can use one that's a little more proper that is a liquid measuring cup. I'm just making it simple. And then we just use like a fork, an ordinary fork, to mix it together. And as you can see, it is quite lumpy. We want it to be lumpy because otherwise it will not pop. People tend to, what they, the biggest mistake they make is they smooth it because you can mix this until it's absolutely smooth and then you're gonna have pancake batter and not popovers. Now, popovers cannot pop unless they're in something that has very little resistance. So we're going to take our custard cups, let's put, just put this over here for the time being, and we're going to give them a spray of Pam. Do not try to use anything else. <laughs> uh, unless you're making Yorkshire puddings, in which case you're gonna use beef fat. Um, but if you're just making popovers, this is really the best thing to use because it will create absolutely no resistance. So here we go, pouring. See how lumpy it is? It is incredibly lumpy. Now, the one thing that we need to remember is that if we're, if we're making it in a pan like this, um, these are already set out to the, you know, the right distance from each other. If we were making a double batch in this pan, what I would suggest using is the middle of the pan and not the four corners. Um, and that way, when you go to reach in, um, you, you can grab one of the four corners to, to get it out because it's gonna be super hot. Um, if we're making it in, a, uh, in the custard cups, then what we wanna do is, is put them on a cookie sheet. Um, and then we would pop them in the oven at 450 and uh, let the oven timer go for 20 full minutes and then lower the temperature to 350 and do another 20 minutes. And then you'll have lovely popovers. Let's look at what they look like in the oven. collapse because they're actually done on the inside.